What's up guys, it's Cody here. And today in this video, we're gonna be talking about what's new in iOS 13 beta three. So you can see right here, this is going to be my uh, beta three device right here. And this is going to be beta two. So we're gonna have these side by side as we walk through some of these changes. Now, if you guys haven't been keeping up with iOS 13 betas and all the new features and new additions and everything, you can check the links in the description below. I have a few videos basically showcasing a ton of different features in iOS 13. One of them has a hundred plus, so definitely worth checking out. Now, if you guys wanna get on iOS 13 beta three, like the developer beta, then I'll have a link on how to do that in the description below as well. So you're gonna get these betas a whole lot quicker than you would if you were on a public beta. Now, one thing I do wanna mention before we get into this is iOS 13 beta three is not available for the iPhone 7 or the 7 plus. Hopefully they don't cut off the iPhone 7 and 7 plus completely for iOS 13. That would be a massive bummer. Hopefully it's just something that they're doing for this beta. Maybe it's not particularly ready for those two devices, but only time will tell. Now, probably one of the main features that you guys wanna know about before we even get into this is 3D touch. And unfortunately, 3D touch is not back. It's not working on my iPhone 10. It's still very much haptic touch. One thing you will notice if I press on this, you'll see that I have to let go in order for it to actually populate that menu. So unfortunately, I'm still not seeing 3D touch, which is kind of a bummer, but hopefully we'll see it in the next beta. But let's go ahead and get into the new features and changes that we're seeing in beta three. First thing that I noticed here is the new microphone down here in the bottom right hand corner. You can see that it's filled in on beta three and it's actually a little bit larger than it is on beta two. Next, if we go into the shortcuts app, you're gonna see that we got rid of the help button here in beta three. And you'll also notice this is gonna be something that we're seeing in a lot of different places. In the search field here, you're actually gonna see the microphone so you can actually use audio in order to search for things. So you can see it's not here in the search field here. But if we go ahead and tap on add an action, you'll notice that if we tap on apps, we're gonna get a completely different view in beta three. So this is a whole lot easier, I think, than having to go through the menus here like you did in beta two. Next, if we go into notes, you're gonna see you get a new splash screen right here on the right hand side. So it's basically just telling you stuff we already know. Add almost anything, note to self or with anyone and sketch your thoughts. Next is a feature that I actually don't have on my iPhone 10. I guess this is what I get for putting the beta on an iPhone 10 rather than a 10s. But if you have a 10s or a 10s Max or a 10R, then you're probably gonna get this feature right here. And it's called FaceTime Attention Correction. This is actually pretty cool. Maybe the coolest feature in beta three so far. So, so how this feature works, I'm actually gonna use some uh, pictures that I pulled off of Twitter. I'll put the guy's uh, handle in the link in the description below if you guys wanna check out the tweet for yourself. But basically you can see right here that his eyes are looking directly at the screen in the camera app. And it looks like he's not looking at the camera lens, right? So if we swipe over again, this is what it looks like when he's looking directly at the camera inside the camera app. So of course, this is exactly what we would intend for it to look like. Now with FaceTime, if we swipe over again, you can see what it looks like if he looks at the camera with FaceTime in iOS 13 beta three, you can see he's looking up a little bit, so he's looking directly at the camera. So what this feature does is you can see he's looking directly at the screen and it looks like he's looking directly into the eyes of the person that he's talking to. So basically it's somehow taking eyeballs and pointing them directly at the other person so it looks like you are looking directly at the other person rather than looking at wherever the window is with the person you're having a call with. So this is actually a really cool feature, um, one that I wish I would get on the iPhone 10. But like I said, this is only going to work on devices that have Face ID. And I think it's even possible that the other person has to have this option enabled as well. And then from that point on, it should look like you're looking directly at the person. So having a still of this is one thing, but actually experiencing it might be pretty crazy. So I look forward to actually checking that out when I put iOS 13 on one of my newer devices. But if you guys do use this feature, be sure to let me know how it goes in the comments below. It's kind of creepy, but at the same time, it's pretty cool. Now, if we go into the app store here and we open up our user profile, you'll notice that in beta two, we had this new updated recently, uh, all the applications right here. Well, you can see it's been removed from iOS 13 beta three. So that's kind of a bummer. I actually kind of like that. Now, if you're in your settings and you click on iCloud up here, you're actually gonna know some rearranging and some fixes. So first thing you'll notice is they added the iCloud emblem to iCloud. 
we knew that was coming. It was just something that was missing from beta two. The second thing you'll notice is that subscriptions has moved from this section right down here up to this section at the top. Next, for some reason, I wasn't able to set up my email. It's not letting me for some reason. I don't know why, but I have a screenshot. Basically, the only change here is that it changed the archive option from blue to purple in beta three. Also in beta three, something that's a little bit annoying is the highlight around the middle button is a little off center. So you'll notice that if you tap on it, that that button or that glyph behind the play and pause button is a little bit to the left. Obviously not a huge deal, but it's something that is back in iOS 13 beta three. Now also in the app store, if we go ahead and open up that and we tap on the arcade tab, you'll notice that we no longer have this placeholder. We have a new placeholder here. that's a little more animated talking about the games that are coming this fall to Apple Arcade. Next in the Find My app, you can see that we have a new tab just called Me. So it's going to allow you to see exactly where you are, share your location, allow friends requests, basically everything that you would anticipate would be in that section, just allowing you to configure that directly from the Find My app. Next, if we go into a photo and we go into markup, you're gonna notice a couple of things. One of them is just a little visual change where you have a little circle around the plus button in the bottom right hand corner. Now also, if you tap on this, this is actually going to give you another option, which is opacity, which apparently you don't get on the iPhone 10, which is pretty annoying. Maybe this is something that's only for newer devices. So in this section right here, you will get an option for opacity. And this is a screen grab that I took off the internet showing that option right here. Now also inside the control center, if you 3D press or haptic press on the volume, you're actually gonna get a little button down here that allows you for noise cancellation. This is only going to work, I believe, on specific devices as well as specific headphones. I wasn't able to get it to work with my AirPods on my iPhone 10, but I do wanna check this out. Next we have headphone audio levels, and this is basically just giving you a more explanation of what these options do. So you can see right here for measure levels, your device does not record or save any sound. To measure audio levels, the health app measures audio exposure through the following devices, and then it tells you the devices right there. Shout out to Jeff Benjamin for allowing me to steal this uh, screenshot here. You also have include other headphones. So the health app can estimate audio levels for devices where a true sound level cannot be determined. These estimates are based on the volume level of your phone. This includes, and then it lists the devices that are applicable. Now, right now I don't have an Apple Watch uh, on iOS 13 just because you're not able to downgrade it. I only have one Apple Watch right now, so I'm not able to show you guys, but voice memos on the Apple Watch now work with iCloud in iOS 13 beta three. Next, if we go into the settings and we tap on privacy, you're gonna see you get a new icon right here for motion and fitness. Also in the messages app, if we go ahead and open this up and we tap on the ellipses right up here at the top, you'll see that this changed from select messages to manage messages list in beta three. Also in beta three, you're able to use audio sharing with first gen AirPods. So that's basically just like, rather than having to share AirPods, you can share just the audio with another user with AirPods. So this was only working with the second gen AirPods, but now it works with the first gen. So that's cool. All right, guys, that's all I got for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you hit that like button. And also let me know in the comments below if you guys made it this far into the video, what device you're using and your beta experience. If you guys have been using iOS 13 beta one or beta two, or if you've upgraded to beta three, let me know how you guys are experiencing it, if it's working well on your devices. I feel like personally with the time that I've spent with beta three, it is actually a little bit smoother than beta two. A lot of people are kind of complaining that you're getting some lagginess, especially when switching pages on the home screen. I haven't had that issue whatsoever, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. For the most part, I've had a whole lot more app crashes on beta two than I have on beta three, but I'll see over the next week whether or not that kind of holds true. Now for me, I haven't been using it on my daily driver. I have a jailbroken 10S Max on my daily driver. That's why I haven't upgraded to iOS 13 on my newer phone. And it seems like unfortunately, a lot of new features are coming to the newer devices, the Face ID devices, like the 10R, the 10S, and the 10S Max, that you're not getting on some of the older devices. And it's crazy to think that an iPhone 10 is an older device now, which is kind of unfortunate. But of course, let me know if you guys run into any features that I didn't mention in this video. I definitely wanna check them out just because I'll be able to add them to future videos if I need to. All right, guys, I hope you have an awesome day. And if you guys wanna stay up to date with everything Apple, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on those bell notifications, and I will see you guys in the next video.